1972 AMC Ambassador Sedan. We've reached peak brown. Ambassador from AMC. Cubic inches are like 360. Ambassador from AMC. I just swing all my apologies. There have been other brown cars. Plymouth Horizon, Toyota Celica, and AMC's own Gremlin. But the Ambassador takes brown to a philosophical level. Different styles of brown, all in this car. Coffee brown for the body, mud brown for the vinyl-covered roof, wet cardboard brown for the trunk carpet, milk chocolate brown for the steering wheel, walnut brown for the fake wood dash, it's so much brown, the brown theme even continues inside the speedometer. Never shall your eyes stray from brown. I am a constable. I am a cement mixer. Time to go to Grandma's house and watch her eat. AMC Ambassador Brome Sedan. If Dad Get Up Noise was a car. Now, never have I thought driving a classic car would be boring, but here we are. See, driving a Reliant K in 2020 is fun because, ha ha, it's so slow. Oh, it's okay. Chrysler was just learning about fuel injection. It's not their fault. Look at all the space inside. Isn't this fun? And my mileage is pretty good. But the Ambassador is slow without excuses. It, it has a 5.9 liter V8, and it was made before emissions. This V8 is not choked, and it, it, there's no catalytic converter. This is one year before the, the fuel crisis, so there's nothing to choke it. Uh, it should move. I know it only has a two-barrel carburetor, but no. It's an open diff, so you'll one-wheel peel it. Ah. It's not a sporty car. Yeah, that's a two-hour carburetor. There's no, there's no second win. Right. Take a guess. How much horsepower do you think this makes? Remember, 5.9 liter V8. How much? The answer, 175. Yeah, it has close to 300 foot-pounds of torque, but it goes and then it doesn't go anymore. See. And also, Joe, the owner, said this is the only classic car he's ever driven where no one waves at you. The Ambassador is invisible to the world. You're as invisible to the world as an elderly man watching traffic from the porch of his semi-detached house in Carbon County. A 1972 BMW 2002 is a classic car. 1974 Carmen Ghia, classic car. 1972 Datsun 240Z, classic car. And same deal, 70 Chrysler Imperial, classic. A classic car offers delight for at least one of your senses. Sharp handling, beautiful to the eyes, the song of my people, tactile embrace. But an ambassador is just an old car. The seats are just seats. The V8 is just an engine. The radio receives amplitude modulation. It's as exciting as playing Desert Bus. Because being boring was this car's demo. 1972 AMC Ambassador Brome Sedan. For the man who still has a cable subscription, because it's the only way to watch me TV. A Brome, and I hope we're pronouncing that right, but if not, get over it, is a horse-drawn carriage with an open driving seat up front, but a roofed passenger area in the back. The name was adopted for car bodies around the turn of the century, and which followed the general layout. You ever see those old cars where the driver is just out in the elements and the passengers in the back are in that protected box? Yeah, Brome. Although by the 70s, the name mostly meant chauffeur-style cars, because it's cool to be driven places. But you know what's even cooler? Driving your goddamn self! This car offers a 5.9 liter V8 with a two barrel carburetor and single exhaust. This 360 cubic inch engine was an option for 1972. The base model was only five liters, ooh. 
the the 5.9 liter makes 175 horsepower at 4,000 RPM and 285 pound-feet at 2,400 RPM. If you wanted a bigger engine, AMC would sell you a 6.6 liter V8 with a four barrel with dual exhaust, but regardless of your choice, the engines all originated from the same design that helped AMC win the 1971 and 1972 Trans Am series. To help the power get to the rear, it has a three-speed automatic torque command transmission, which was purchased from Chrysler to replace the original Borg Warner. The Ambassador goes for style but falls short of sophistication. It's like a pack of Marlboros that achieves self-expression. It's a classic car no one cares about. No thumbs up, no free passes from law enforcement, no pats on the back from neighborhood dads. You might get some respectful nods at cars and coffee that you attend for tens of minutes while you sit there thinking about all the times you said you too to the cute ticket vendor when she said, enjoy your movie. AMC Ambassador Brome. For the guy whose favorite show is the videos that play at the gas pumps. As far as features go, not much to write home about. You got four-wheel power drum brakes, although this would be the final year for the front drums. You got four-wheel coil suspension, kind of interesting. A 122-inch wheelbase, 211 inches of length. The exterior features a new vinyl top installed in 2019, along with the Yucca Tan exterior paint job. And that pun is probably the cleverest thing about the car. It has standard air conditioning, though Joe's doesn't work at the moment. But it's worth noting that the Ambassadors had air conditioning since 1968, predating Cadillac and Lincoln. There's no catalytic converter and no 85 mile an hour speedometer. It has a 120 mile an hour speedometer, but it doesn't matter one bit to the driving experience. Wherever you're going, you're just going to have to get there when you get there. The name Ambassador dates back to the days of Nash Kelvinator before the company merged with Hudson to form AMC in 1954. A time period that's romanticized because houses cost $10 and the job ferry left lifelong careers under your pillow. None of your relatives had overlapping political views. You just sat around at Easter brunch, agreeing with each other about everything. Because the Venn diagram of opinions is one big circle. And marriages lasted not because people loved each other better, but because it wasn't a widely held opinion that two people could just accept that a relationship had run its course, and then they could both move on, having grown from a shared experience. Oh yeah, cars. The Ambassador was unpopular in its glory days and forgotten after. It's like a kid visiting their high school a year after graduation, and then a teacher says, I thought you died! Legend goes that the Ambassador was a traveling salesman's favorite car because... The front seats folded into the rear, creating a sort of bed. The brochures were sexist, and the car, stamped in the door, said it has advanced unit construction, combines body and frame into a single, all-welded structural unit. Doesn't mean anything. Ford did this in 1960. All it means is that the frame ends in the middle of the car, making the floor and the roof a stressed member. Although it's nice, inside the hood, that they tell you the idle speed, ignition timing, and spark plug gap. Ambassador. The official car of that one guy. Okay. You've seen him. The one guy at Cars and Coffee. He shows up early, parks his car, and then walks away from his car. Yeah, he looks at other cars, but he waits. He waits till like a cycle of people go through. And then he pretends he doesn't own the car. He comes back to his car and pretends to be a spectator and hypes it up to strangers. You've seen it. Yeah. They don't make them like this anymore. This is real classic. This is going to be worth something someday. I really like the owner. Do you see the owner? Has he been around? I like how he did this, this, and this. This is going to be worth something someday. They don't make them like this anymore. Nope. They don't make them like this anymore. They don't make them like this anymore. They don't. Everybody else has left. He's just, they don't make them like this anymore. They don't make them like this anymore. He's just speaking to the air in front of him. It's like that scene at the end of The Aviator. It's a way of the future. It's a way of the future. It's a way of the future. The Ambassador is the equivalent of every dream you've had when you're running, but it's like gliding through molasses. Production totals for 1972 across all body styles was 44,364 units, which is nearly twice what the C3 Corvette was doing in the same year. They made 27,000 units. On the other hand, 
The Ambassador probably had broader appeal, as far as mid-sized sedans go versus two-seat sports cars, to say nothing of the relative issues people had with the C3's build quality. You could almost say it's fitting. By 1973, a lot of AMC's biggest gains were from the Gremlin and the Hornet, in addition to their acquisition of Jeep. The Ambassador was a semi-big, semi-luxurious, affordably expensive, unsexy car that blended into the fabric of the automotive scene like a Honda Civic in a Circuit City parking lot in 2003. Built in Kenosha, Wisconsin, they were nicknamed the Kenosha Cadillacs. And while the Ambassador didn't actively lose money for AMC, it didn't really make any either. And they no longer fit with the vision the company wanted to put forward into the 1970s. Instead, shifting their focus to the Pacer, for example. The Ambassador was a microcosm of what was happening across the domestic auto industry. The last gasp of the American inefficient monolith. It's nice because it's big. And that's it. That was how you sold it. It's big and it's cheap. That's it. But within a year, cars immediately started getting smaller and imports began to team the road like tar snakes. When we say a car is a product of its time, this is what we mean. Because a car like this could only have happened before the oil embargo. Automotive hubris wouldn't exist like this again for years to come. Time would have to pass into the 90s for the adoption of the Ford Excursion before we would see this type of attitude again. As it stands, this ambassador is in good working condition. Joe purchased this in 2017, and while the car's prior history is spotty at best, Joe figures he's at least the third owner, possibly the fourth. But from what he's learned from his mechanic, this car has been tinkered with relentlessly, to the point where it's hard to tell what's all original and what isn't. Regardless, Joe himself has had to make some changes and repairs of his own over the years. He replaced a burned-up transmission with a torque command unit from a 1974 model in 2018, and the following year he removed the old vinyl roof, which was decaying like a disregarded tooth. But he luckily was able to find a replica that matched the original perfectly. That's kind of where this car finds its value, through distance from its time period. Because if it wasn't cool then, the only chance it has of being cool now is through comparison to all the curvy, safe-looking paperweights on the road today. But even in its time, the Ambassador was marketed as a curvy, safe paperweight, like a wallflower at a middle school dance, sipping on punch while he rides the bleachers. This brown car just sits there, with its nose that's longer than 2020 feels. Like the last smallpox epidemic, or porn on 35mm, maybe this is better left in 1972. An ambassador brought a sedan you can tell from 1972, and it's, it's about what you think. 99,000 miles, close to 100,000. Probably passed it by now, but if not, then here's to hope.